All right, welcome back to Flack of Socks, the podcast, episode 141. Today on the show, the showdown at the border continues with General Abbott refusing to back down against the feds. Then, Will Farrell is on some dumb, dumb transish in this week's Cringe of the Week, and it's going to make you wonder, was this guy ever even really that funny? Then, journalists are getting laid off left and right. We're going to tell you why you should hate them more than ever. And last but not least, this mom does the unthinkable with her child in a grocery store in this week's Urban Decay. All this and more, it's Fungus Talks, the podcast, episode 141, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. It's what the stocks the podcast featuring Richard Grab Richard. All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, you know about Sierra Whiskey Company, the folks that brought us Undertack, the revolutionary boxers that are changing the game, my favorite boxers, the only ones I wear, the right-wing apparel company that are show watchers, who we all love. Well, I have a big announcement. They have brought in the products they're offering, and they now make T-shirts, socks, joggers, and sweatshirts, all made in America with that same rugged spirit we've all come to enjoy. Their socks are made of battle weave wool that's five times stronger than Merino. Their ring spun cotton hoodies and joggers are dangerously comfortable and every Patriot needs the EDC t-shirt three pack. And remember, Undertack isn't your typical men's boxers. They're made out of Modal, which is like cotton, but a little bit better. It's 50% more moisture wicking, it's antibacterial, it's super light and comfortable, the waistband is fantastic and moves with you, they stay in place, they're sturdy, and they're also fade and stretch resistant. Not to mention Sierra Whiskey Co. also donates a portion of their profits to companies that are in the fight against human trafficking. That's a full 360 win. So stock your drawers today. We all need underwear and t-shirts and hoodies and joggers and socks. Tell them Fleck has sent you. Go to undertack.com. That's U-N-D-E-R-T-A-C.com. And use code Fleck is 20 at checkout for 20% off site-wide. Exceptional comfort, twice the guarantee, and a fraction of the price. Undertack.com is the website. Fleck is 20 is the code for 20% off at checkout. They support the show. They're major show watchers. Let's support them right back and stock our drawers. Now let's get into house. All right. Thank you to Undertack for sponsoring. Thank you, Undertack. They have all a new line of clothes. Socks, sweatshirts, t-shirts, everything. So load up, everybody. We have a very important show today. It is our Friday show. And as some of you know, we don't have a Tuesday show because I'm going on a business trip. Big business, man. <laughs> business. Go to business. He wears the jersey. I'm going to the big city on a business trip. <laughs> um, so there's not going to be an episode next week on Tuesday. Uh, there will be a Q&A bonus land special episode on Tuesday instead. So make sure you join bonus land and get access to that. Yep. If not, we're back Friday next week as usual. Hopefully nothing happens at the Texas border in between now and then. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're going at like the worst time. Yeah, exactly. All right. We have a very important housekeeping this week. A little light housekeeping. Only three pages and one of the pages is half full. Okay. So a little different. Uh, but first things first, journalist section. We have a journalist section. The LA Times laid off a bunch of journalists, and everyone seems to be laying off a bunch of journalists lately. Yeah, the LA Times lays off 115 staffers amid financial crisis, um, and the LA Times reporters and other sympathetic journalists have been saying, oh, you, this is such a hit to journalism, and oh, this is so bad. So we just want to go through a couple of headlines brought to you by the LA Times and maybe some from just journalists in general. Yeah, here's a little hint as to why everyone got fired, why yeah. you don't have a job anymore. Yeah, the LA Times, white drivers are polluting the air breathed by LA's people of color. Whoa, not divisive at all. What are you up to? You're fired. Column, Larry Elder is the black face of white supremacy. You've been warned. Why is no one reading the article? <laughs> fired, fired, fired. Uh, students in MAGA hat taunt Native American veteran Kentucky Diocese investigates. That was the uh, Sandman. You know, the, yeah, the yeah. Sandman. He I, I think they paid him out probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, column from the L.A. Times mocking anti-vaxxers COVID deaths is ghoulish. Yes, but maybe necessary. So got that one wrong, too. That's not even an action. That's just mocking them might be necessary. <laughs> 
Uh, so friendly reminder, I guess, that you don't hate journalists enough. And then they're out there on Twitter talking about how it's a solemn day and journalists are, you know, oh, we really need them. Washington Post, the racist legacy many birds carry. Yeah, you need to save. We need to save journalism. It's what? Like, for what? What, what? Do you, what do you? What do you say you do here? Yeah. Um, when was the last time there's been some Woodward and Bernstein type deep level really blew off the top of something, or, or a hit piece or anything exposing Democrats or the Biden administration? I, I can't remember. Obama, what? What? Kind, what's your favorite ice cream? Yeah. So um, exactly. And obviously, at this point, the journalism is all pushed towards clicks. And division and anti-Trump at all costs, and it now is literally costing them their businesses. Yeah, there was an article about how peanut butter and jelly is racist. Yeah, someone's job. And Some, they go, they show up to work, they get a coffee, <laughs> they go on lunch break, and they go, "How's the peanut butter and jelly piece going?" <laughs> oh, it's going great. I, I just made connected two dots that nobody could have seen coming. Uh, and you know, it's just dishonest people doing hack shit, and that's what you get. Yeah, and even on the way out. Um, there was an, an everyone's getting laid off, but even on the way out, this NBC article can't help themselves. It says journalists of color hit hard in seismic LA times layoffs. So journalists of color, even on the way out, you and, can't help yourself. And then the layoffs themselves, you know, that's NBC writes that article, but the layoffs were expected to impact employees with the least seniority per the union's contract. So, so it's not even, <laughs> so it's not even black. Oh yeah. Some black people were the most recent hires. Okay, great. Nice, nice journalism there. It's like a circular thing where journalism sucks and then journalists cover for them sucking and then they want you to feel bad. So friendly reminder, you don't hate journalists enough at yeah. this point. And we have a bunch of examples in urban decay as well that, oh. that are going to reinforce yeah. that. Um, so that's, you know, our, our journalist section. Make sure you guys help us with the algo, tickle the algo, juice the post. Leave a comment. Leave a comment again. Then start talking about what you want to talk about. Like the video. Notifications are on. And send us something to the P.O. box. Send us something to the P.O. box. Got to make Richard say it. Yeah. All right. Let's get into our election section. First of all, Joe Biden's been looking pretty sharp lately. He's yeah. got two clips that just came out that, I don't know, make me kind of worried for 24. Like, he, he might he might pull this off. I think he might have even gotten enough in 2020 of seeing this. <laughs> we'll teach Donald Trump, a valuable lesson. Don't mess with the women in America unless you want to get the benefit. I mean, you don't mess with the women in America. You don't want to get the benefit. Unless you want to get the benefit. Don't mess with the women <laughs> of America. And, uh, like, let's just let's just do an example here. Joe Biden, you know, migration, immigration, the biggest thing, right? Say 10, me 10 million illegals came in recently, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's assume a 0.1% rapist rate. Amongst those 10 million. That is 10,000 rapists? Yeah, that Joe Biden just <laughs> let in. So 10,000 rapists, don't mess with the women. I don't know. I think women like safety. Yeah. But the, the I people mean, on the street from third world countries that see a girl in her like workout gym clothes and a sports bra and they yeah. go like that. They lunge. Th that's not looking out for women. The Awuga henchman maxing types, they come across the open border. They don't, yeah. they're, they're not born here. Yeah, they're here already. There was another Biden clip where he's doing pretty well too. The beer brewed here, <laughs> it is used to make the brew beer in this refinery. Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why. <laughs> people laugh. Is that a laugh track? Yeah. And people laugh like he's really up to something. Uh, it's like the Seinfeld laugh track that you hear, and you're like, is that the same laugh as before? Crazy. The beer brewed here is the Great Lakes. Charity. It's charity, <laughs> dude. What? <laughs> What happened to this guy? I don't know. Um, well, I think there's at a, they're at a point where he has like an Adderall cocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they can only use it. It's like NOS in a car. You can only use it so many times. Exactly. And they might be getting maxed out. Like he might increase his tolerance of what he can handle. Mm -hmm. And they're at like a sweet spot where it's like if we go a little more, it'll blow up his heart. <laughs> if we go a little less. He still can't talk. You got to defend the woman going for the benefit. <laughs> so they're in like this world where, all right, we can only use it like once a week. And yeah, it's like we need they're planning it out on a calendar. Like, all right, we need it to January 6th anniversary. He has to. <laughs> and then like they know there's a Texas standoff coming up where he's going to have to address the nation and come up with something crazy. So they couldn't blow it on the Great Lakes yeah. Brewery appearance. Yeah. Two weeks before the uh, State of the Union. Oh, he's got to be exactly everything. Exactly. Uh, so there was the New Hampshire uh, caucus a couple days ago, a few days yeah. ago at this point. Uh, there's a little stat I wanted to point out. 47% of the voters in the Republican caucus were, are, were Republican voters. Yeah. So it was all independents, 
and then like 8% Democrats. Yeah. And then Nikki Haley outperformed because all these independents came and, uh, you know, New Hampshire's a little weird area. People like to stay independent, live free or die. Mm. I spent some years in New Hampshire. As did I. But uh, it wasn't really clean baseball. Didn't seem to me. Yeah. And there was a little clip where they were interviewing people outside the convention. And here's one of Nikki Haley's typical voters, I guess. Christian, who did you vote for and why? Yeah, so thank you. I voted for Nikki Haley, and it was certainly a strategic vote. Um, I think the DNC is fairly resolute in their nomination for Joe Biden. Uh, and while I wouldn't vote for her in a general election, particularly on our differences with uh, climate change solution, a woman's right to bodily autonomy or uh, incarceration rates, I think a vote for Nikki Haley is helps diminish Trump's influence in the RNC and their nomination. But it's also. Yeah, we get it. So it's all it's to diminish. It's to diminish Trump. It's a strategic vote. But I want to talk about what this white kid in New Hampshire is voting for. Climate change and women's bodily autonomy were two of the things that he listed. How did you get so far from your own self-interest? What what happens to people where you're you're not like, okay, what are my taxes? Where where's my family doing? You know, like it's so easy if you're a, a oil and gas worker in Texas to be like, okay, Trump, Biden, Trump. no new <laughs> drilling. Yeah, Trump. I you know, and but for a kid like this to talk about Climate change, the big abstraction where it's like, you know, China is polluting rivers, China is using coal, India too, like those less like not third world countries, but uh, s slower in their development than the U.S., right? Climate change and women's bodily autonomy. So nothing about you, really. Yeah, I need to uh, vote for someone who's going to raise the taxes to change the weather. And obviously, girls need to be able to kill babies. Yeah. What? I'm voting for Nikki. <laughs> so it's so confusing to me how people are so far away from their own self-interest. And it, it just seems like a psyop kind of work, right? Yeah. What does he have? A hippie girlfriend who sucks him all the time. And, and she's just like, well, we really need an abortion. You got to go to the protest with me this weekend. So and he's like, yeah, I'll get educated. It's it's sad to see. He's doing his strategic vote. He thinks he's, uh, you know, doing something. And he, he gets on the news to talk about it and thinks he's the smart one voting for nothing that affects him. So, yeah. Exactly. And then later in the interview, they said um, this was the case with a lot of people I spoke to today. Yeah. So basically, everyone's on that same page. That kid should be like a one issue voter. And then an example of a one issue for him would be the Zinn ban, the yeah. potential Zinn ban. Chuck Schumer is out um, trying to get rid of Zins. Can you read the headline? Yeah. Senator Chuck Schumer calling for federal action to crack down on a product called Zinn. Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with Zinn. A lot of you are probably familiar with Zen I'm too. a double decker. <laughs> I'm a double cheesed out Zen user. So um, before the show, after the show, uh, but I never do it on air. So. Yep. So this would hopefully activate a lot of the frat guys. Yeah. This is like the uh, complimentary issue from college girls and abortion, college guys and Zen. Yeah. This is our chance. Mm -hmm. This is like a Boston Tea Party type issue. Rubicon. Rubicon. I don't know what Rubicon means, but... You don't cross it. You don't cross yeah, it. Yeah, you don't cross until it. Until you're really serious. <laughs> exactly. But you know how it is in all over the country. They give you free crack pipes. They'll give you needles so you can do fentanyl easier. Yeah, we want you to do the super hardcore drugs yeah. really safe. But some teenagers might get Zins. I don't know if it's like a push to try to get suburban mom Democrat votes. I'm not sure. I don't fully get it. It seems below Schumer's pay grade. Yeah. Unless, uh, unless he's got a big donor who really wants it done. And it's probably like a tobacco guy who didn't get in enough. But Zinn's owned by Philip Morris. Yeah. So yeah. it's like they're already big tobacco owned. Right? I know. I know. Doesn't, so. Don't make sense to me. Maybe they're playing hardballs with Philip Morris. Like, hey, we'll keep this going if you don't give us some money. I don't know. Uh, but however you see it, uh, with the primaries heating up, uh, Nikki Haley. Yeah. Complete bird brain, complete, complete moron. Some people on the Republican side who think that they have like a pulse on the populist vain mm -hmm. are saying that she should be Trump's VP. There's a Jack Posobiec tweet that said Obama voter Clay Travis wants Haley on the Trump ticket. And Clay Travis is the co-host of the show Clay and Butt with Clay and Butt, with Sexton. Butt Sexton. Yeah, Butt Sex. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know how you read the tea leaves. I don't know how you uh, assess the field and go, hmm, I got DeSantis wrong, but maybe Trump and Nikki Haley, maybe I can get back in the fold with that take. This time... <laughs> Uh, there will be no next time. I got this one. You yeah. Know? So, so I don't know, man. But Sexton and Clay, I don't know what you guys are on. I don't know. I don't know what you guys are on. Just leave it at that. Not Zins. <laughs> if you were on Zins, you wouldn't say this shit. <laughs> yeah.
All right, let's move on to the border. We have a lot of border updates. Remember that guy from last episode who was like Iranian and at the border and was like, you don't know me. You're going to know me soon. You're going to know my name. Mark mm -hmm. my words. Yeah. Turns out he might be a terrorist. Yeah. So there was like there's, they're comparing him to this other guy in these photos, and it looks a lot like the convicted terrorist. Yeah. It Terrorists in our country. This is Movsum Samadov. He is the leader of the uh, Islamic terrorist group uh, Azerbaijani Islamic Party, and he actually served 12 years after being convicted of trying to overthrow the government. And I don't know if we're absolutely positive if this is him, but it looks know, like him. Rings true, and I don't think you issue those kind of loose threats like you'll know my name soon enough unless you have some sort of reputation, so and some sort of plan. Yeah. So that's good to know. Uh, and then there is obviously the showdown that is brewing between uh, Greg Abbott, or as I call him, General Abbott. He's he's looking to be a great man in history, is what it looks like, and he can be. Um, there's a showdown between him and the federal. Border Patrol. Joe Biden, the Biden administration. Exactly. Right? The Texas National Guard is uh, holding down Shelby Park and not letting the feds in, which is good. The razor wire is still up, even though the feds are allowed to cut it down, according to the Supreme Court ruling. The, the feds are allowed to cut it down, but the Texas National Guard isn't allowing them into the area where they can use a little scissors and snip that razor wire. So, Yep, which is great. That's what we want. And then there was a Beto O'Rourke tweet about the situation. Can you give that a read? Well, it's a Beto O'Rourke tweet, but this is what everybody else is saying, or a lot of people on the Democrat side. Abbott is using the Texas Guard to defy a Supreme Court ruling. When Governor Fabius Faubus did this in uh, 1957, Eisenhower federalized the Arkansas Guard to ensure compliance with the law. Biden must follow this example of bold, decisive leadership to end this crisis before it gets worse. So we need to cut the razor wire to let in all these third worlder illegals or else it could get worse. Yeah. The invasion of third worlders could get worse if we don't cut the wire and let everyone in. Yeah, I don't exactly get it. And now Biden's in this tough spot where he can what either use force or I mean, and the thing that Democrats use, they get some judge in Hawaii sometimes to go like, oh, no, this is actually reversed. And they just write a little decree. And usually people go along with it. And uh, I've seen people calling it lawfare, you know, mm -hmm. just maneuvering and words and nothing substantial. But it doesn't seem like Abbott is going to be listening to any little memos written right now. He's just like, no, we're stopping people from physically coming in. So yeah. now Biden's in a hard place where he either has to, like, call a bluff and send in troops or something in an election year or kind of take the L, which he should. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of states are obviously backing up Texas. It's kind of crazy to watch. Texas kind of do this uh, defiant move from the federal government, and then states and governors are just like, we're with you, Texas, on Twitter. So it's kind of the future. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've seen a lot of leftists talk about how, oh, like put, putting union soldier memes and like a new civil war. We don't want that. We just want to defend and enforce the actual rules that were being ignored, abused, and letting 3 million people come in. Yeah, we want no more illegals here. And then there is some talk about- They're literally called illegals, guys. <laughs> it's in the name. Yeah. And there's um, some talk about federal border patrol agents going AWOL. Mm -hmm. There was a tweet and then a John Doyle response. Can you give the original tweet a read? Just spoke with a U.S. Army officer stationed on the border. His orders to patrol this month haven't been renewed due to the SECDEF being AWOL and rippling down the command. And that's Lloyd Austin, who's been like in the hospital and working from home. Mm-hmm. Um, Texas military has displayed the pinnacle of professionalism and integrity, impressing U.S. military service members. U.S. military service members are openly discussing defecting to the Texas side should a major break open b uh, between the Texas and the U.S. governments. And then John Doyle replied to that with something interesting. He said, spoke with an officer at Fort Bragg, confirmed same talks are happening there. Sentiment is almost universally, if something happens, I'm immediately going AWOL and heading to Texas. Let's go. So don't try nothing, Joe Biden. <laughs> don't fucking try anything, right? It's like time to go AWOL. <laughs> There's like we're getting into like constitutional like is what that you even legal to encourage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. AWOL? That's what I'm saying. It's time to go AWOL, boys. I don't know. Any you're allowed. Yeah. I don't know. You don't want to get in trouble. Time to go AWOL. AWOL in my dream. Yeah. Um, don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, because we, we are teetering on that like crazy fine line where like if a single bullet gets fired, you know, uh, yeah. oh shit. They the podcast said yeah. to do it. <laughs> this fat fuck podcast <laughs> said to go AWOL. I am not saying that. Um, I just want to see Governor Abbott, St General Abbott, stand tall. We salute you, General. Stand tall, General Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're a sick fuck. Hey, 
It is what it is, guys. It, it's almost ironic that yeah. the stand tall guy is in a wheelchair. The, the one guy who's actually standing up is in a wheelchair. That's the future, though. That's the America. I know. That's the simulation winking. It is. I don't want to be negative. You know me. Th this is not a negative thing. This is like a I'm true. I'm about to. Okay. I'm about to be there. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, this is like a true win fighting, yeah. like sta standing up to Biden and like Biden's incompetent and all the little bees working in the Biden administration who actually run the machine. They're like, oh, Jesus, I don't know. Green Jean Pierre. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So I don't, it. Yeah. I don't want to be negative, but, you know, the stand down is good. With the feds, I support General Abbott. I support Greg Abbott. I think everyone should support him. This is good. But it's kind of a little lame, right? There's, there's, already, already, there's already 50 million people here illegally. <laughs> That's a ballpark number. It's Yeah. It, I, I think there's 50 but over million. Time, over time, right now, I think there's at least 50 million illegals here. In the last three years, it's probably half that or you know 15 million or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... Their mission and their goal of load America up full of illegals, they're like 98% done. Yeah, 80%-ish. I'm ballparking so it So it's up. like if there's 50 million illegals here, it's pretty much all done. And then to stop it now, now yeah. we're going to say, hey, no more. It's like, uh, is it a little too little too late? And imagine being the Mexican or the Venezuelan guy who made his way up. And he's like, oh, I'll go next week. And then yeah. finally <laughs> now there's razor wire at the border. Yeah. Which is sick. Um, but also, so I don't want to be negative, but yeah, I know they, they, you're they, absolutely right. This is part one of a multi-part series, which ultimately ends with the deportation of like 40 million people. Yeah. And then only after the deportation, do you realize how many people don't have any papers mm -hmm. and are actually here? Um, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. you know, rents go down less, less street tacos. Oh no. But rents go down, a couple things, you know. And they, probably not even less street tacos. I know. There's just a couple trucks in a couple areas. Like, everyone's going to still have their tacos and their shitty Mexican food. Yeah. <laughs> and a white woman will come in and take over. She'll be like, can I get so, you all a quesadilla? Yeah, exactly. So we got to support Greg Abbott. That's great. But also... It took a little while to take a stand. <laughs> yeah. Not, well, hey, I'm, I'm not. Glad, I'm glad you did, but it took a little while. There's already everyone already pretty much got here. <laughs> so let's stop the last few people. More than the population of 33 states. <laughs> yeah. So let's stop the last few for sure. That's great. But we could have done this maybe three years ago. Yeah. We yeah. could have done this the whole time, yeah. but we didn't. Uh, last piece of our border update, the UN giving money. So the UN's giving money in the form of credit cards, debit cards, cash advances, and cash in envelopes. Basically. To illegals that are coming up from Central and uh, South America. Exactly. And right before they get to the border, they're getting like stipends, basically. And then the, uh, the U.S. funds a big chunk of the U.N. So it's basically U.S. tax dollars going to illegals who are on their way to go across the southern border with nothing, no papers, completely illegally. Yeah, it's like the Rothschilds funding both sides of a war, except it's just the U.S. taxpayer. And we've said this before. So you it's know, literally us. It's literally us. We're getting, so mad at it. We're but getting it's fucking like... smoked. All right, the U.N. just released the 2024 Interagency Coordination Platform for Refugees and Migrants from Venezuela, a planning and budget document for handing out $1.6 billion in 17 Latin American countries. In one year. That's 2024. Yeah. Uh, it confirms the UN with the helping hands of 248 uh, NGOs is indeed giving debit cards to illegals funded in large part by U.S. taxpayers. And then it says, despite the R4V plan title naming Venezuelans as recipients of this aid operation, the document's fine print says the largest goes to all nationalities and multiple other nationalities. Um, and yeah, so it's just hundreds of millions of dollars to across 624,000 immigrants who were in transit to the United States during 2024. Uh, that money is often handed out as prepaid rechargeable debit cards, but also hard cash in envelopes, bank transfers and mobile transfers in the U S cash in envelopes. They go, Oh, good luck on your journey. Here's cash in an envelope. And, and it's our money. And you, <laughs> and you know what? I fucking hope someone at the UN is just going, yeah, I handed out cash in the envelopes and they steal it. I'd yeah. rather someone in the UN who's corrupt as fuck get rich off my tax dollars, then give it to random migrants just trying to cross up through Venezuela and the Panama. Giving yeah. it to the migrants, our tax dollars. Do you know when they did the the Boston Tea Party? It was for like a 1% 1%. Tax. It was like 1% or 2%. So, And then now the money's all gone. Money's fucking gone. It's devalued. Uh, every 
every food item you buy is 100% more expensive than it was five years ago. Something bad happened. Uh, but the migrants are staying, are getting cash, right? Something bad happened. Let's move on to something more positive. We're still in housekeeping. All right. The Snarf Snarf Plow. Remember we had the thing where we won the contest and we named the Snowplow Snarf Snarf in Bangor, Maine? There it is. Wow. And it's all titled up. It's got snarf Snarf. snarf. <laughs> There we go. There's some uplifting. That's a dub. There's some in-housekeeping uplifting. And also, someone sent me this. There was a chat GPT description of the show, and they asked chat GPT, like, what's Fleckus Talks? And then chat GPT responded. Fleckus Talks is a YouTube channel hosted by Austin Fletcher, also known as Fleckus. On his channel, Fleckus conducts interviews and discusses various topics ranging from politics and current events to culture and social issues. He often takes to the streets to engage... Mm, with people and get their perspectives on different subjects, Fleckus Talks aims to provide a platform for open and honest conversations challenging mainstream narratives and promoting free speech. Thank you, AI. Thank you. Thank you, AI. Very fair, AI. Mm -hmm. They should also mention he's on like a health journey and he's down like 40 pounds. Yeah, he constantly brings up sucking. I don't know why. <laughs> he's a, a constant member of the dog park club. Yeah. He goes to the dog park a lot. Um, and then someone else made a greatest show on earth meme for us last week. There you go. There you go. We're taking over the circus posters. That's great. All right, let's move on. The vacuum augmented reality. So this is augmented reality, which is like VR and reality put together. And you do vacuuming, and it shows you the spots you miss. Yeah. Do you like that? Well, it, it obviously it serves a purpose. It serves a function. But this technically counts as plugging into the Matrix. That's what I was going to say. So if you're plugging into the Matrix to vacuum when you could just eyeball the dust, I don't know if it's worth sacrificing for that. And you're kind of saying the world God made isn't fun enough. Exactly. Which is disrespectful. Yeah. And you know what? I, I was driving home from uh, the gym the other night, and I just kind of was like happy that I was driving in this car that thousands of years of people would never even fucking dream of. Mm. And it's just like, you know, you can get you can get off on less stuff than plugging into the Matrix. Exactly. That's my point. Which takes us to our next clip. It's a person who gets off on pretty much nothing. <laughs> Johnny Hamcheck. Yeah. We post him a lot, but this new Johnny Hamcheck, you telling me this is this clip right here is not better than augmented reality? <laughs> there he is. Hey. Long time no see. What are you up to? Dude, <laughs> not too good, man. What's the matter? But I do. Grandma told me to give it to you. She said you loved her uh, grapefruit. I can't have them anymore. I'm on blood pressure medicine. You're shitting me. No. Dude, we miss you at the party, too. So Which Martha party? retired. Yeah, the hand check financial. Oh. Yeah, the pyramid program yeah. we used to be a part of. And, uh, is Bob Boney in there today? Have you seen him yet? No. Would you mind helping me out with a small favor? What is your small favor? So my Uncle Tommy's getting ready to go into court, and Bob Boney was representing him, and Bob Boney apparently is, has fallen off the wagon yet again. And All right. I know yeah. <laughs> we're done. It, it, we're done. But it basically ends at this guy kind of agreeing to do a pro bono <laughs> law defense for Bob Boney or whatever. He, he ends it with, call me on Monday. Oh, my God. Uh, we'll get you squared away. Call me on Monday. Isn't that more fun than vacuuming? Yeah, you don't need to vacuum with augmented reality. Let's just be happy. With it. We got plenty. If you go outside, like the tree will grow a fruit and you can eat it. There's plenty here to be happy with. We don't need yeah. to spice up vacuuming. Yep. All right. We have a little bit of an update from uh, abroad. Okay. A foreign update, I guess we can call it. Malay, that guy, Javier Malay, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. So he just got elected to Argentina. He's Argentina, a big populist. Argentina, big populist. And he has a couple new hires. Mm -hmm. So here's one of them. Feliz de tener la bandera de Argentina and me despacho, she Is says. that Spanish? Uh, yeah, or Portuguese. I think they speak Spanish in Argentina. Yeah. So they have a new hire there. And then another new hire lady there at mm -hmm. the desk. Yep. So Three new hires. If this is the future of populist politics, sign me up. This is like the Seinfeld episode where Elaine realizes everybody's got gigantic cans. Yeah. Hey. So he's got a type. He's got a certain type of populist he likes. Argentina populist politics is getting way more interesting. Good for them. Very happy to see it. Ireland, not so much. We just saw this clip about this Muslim woman who's not happy with Ireland because they make too many jokes. A person looks at you and then he, they'll give you that some stereotype joke 
and you'll be like, like, it's not a joke. It's something serious that you shouldn't be saying and everything. But then you'll get, oh, but we're Irish. We like to joke around. We like to have make a, f- a laugh out of something. And that needs to change within the Irish community. As much as I am Irish, that's the one thing that it kind of annoys me. As much as I am Irish, so 0%. 0%. <laughs> Someone brought you there when you were a little kid and took you away from your homelands and your destiny? Your, the homeland that probably sucks. Zero percent Irish. I, hey, and I know yeah. you got a little bit of an accent, and you were, you probably think you're raised there, but uh, you don't start telling the Irish what bits they can do. Yeah, I the Irish like to do bits. They have a certain sense of humor. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. So you come here as like a migrant from like a third world country, and it's not good enough. You have to immediately start changing things so you could have it your way. That's kind of the energy with all these migrants. Yeah, it's like. We need more money. We need more resources. We need better living, whatever. Why don't you go back to whatever shit country you came from? Yeah. And make that how you want it. You, you don't come here and change this it. This isn't Burger King. It's <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> yeah. It's America, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then last thing from Canada, they made some guy sign a waiver because he ordered a cheeseburger cooked medium. Medium at the Toronto Hilton, which like basically should be America. It's yeah. a, it's on the Great Lakes, you know, like that should be America. And Hilton basically. is like that should just have it's an American, American brand. Yeah, yeah, American rules. But you order a you order a burger medium and they make you sign a waiver. So Canada gone. See ya. Why don't we why don't send all the illegals to Canada? Like imagine we just continue. The buses, they didn't go to Chicago and New York. They just went to Canada and we just sacrificed the cold. They'd probably come down here anyway. Yeah, that's what we're realizing. Then we'd too. have another border that we have to protect against. Right now, we basically only have one. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Then we got to play defense on two fronts, and it's like World War II all over again. We're fighting Japan and Germany. Yeah, that's a good point. Because there is a thing where like all these migrants that are from like a lot of times desert climates, mm. hot African climates, and they get dropped off in Chicago or Minneapolis, I think they're probably going to be like, hey, let's go to Florida. Let's yeah. go to Arizona. And mm-hmm. they, they might head to red states just because it's more fitting for them climate wise. Yeah, it so, ain't it ain't like uh, 19th century immigration where the Scandinavians went to Minnesota and go, "Oh, this is like home." Yeah. I'm going to start talking like this. <laughs> All right, that's the end of our foreign update. There's a good bit I saw the other day. This woman goes in the store and says, "Hey, can you record me for a video for a sec?" And this is what she does. "Excuse me. Could you please record me for just a second?" Oh my god, what? <laughs> that's a good bit. That's a good bit, and that's an old bit. People have done that a lot. But a boomer a boomer type grandma, 60 plus, doing the same bits as like a zoomer haircut kid, there's a whole lane for that. You can recreate pranks going back 10 years. Yeah. And nobody expects it. That is a good point. The boomer aspect of it really blindsided the camera. It hole. elevates it. Takes it to the next level. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, there was a road rage incident that actually was pretty good. Uh, another boomer, similar type of lady, <laughs> similar type as the bit boomer. Uh, look at the look at the conversation here. You little fucking cunt! You think you can talk to people like that and get away with it? You little bitches! I have severe nerve pain, and I hope it happens to you someday. You little bitches! I could fucking cream all of you, even with all my nerve pain. You fat fucking bitch. We're fat? Yeah, you. You're fucking fat. And you're a fucking ugly little fucking mutt. <laughs> and you have a big fucking nose. <laughs> <laughs> Just cooked them all. Fat, ugly mutt, pig nose. Yeah. Absolute cook sesh. I, roasted. I, I like when people show up when the camera's on, you know? Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. So respect to that lady. I hope your nerve pain feels better. I'm on your yeah. side. I'm on your side, too. Let us know if you're a show watcher. We'll send you a base mug. Because that is a base performance right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is the end of housekeeping. We have a little bit of a lighter housekeeping this week. We are moving on to Cringe of the Week. Before we get there, guys, there is not going to be an episode on Tuesday for the public, but there will be a Tuesday Q&A bonus land that you're not going to want to miss. You guys love the show. Maybe you've been thinking about joining bonus land for a few months now. Maybe you want some more show, but you didn't quite take the leap. Now is the time to do it. It's only seven something a month. Sure. It's very cheap compared to other things that we buy all the time from Amazon or Starbucks or from people that hate us or people that support abortion. So why not splurge on the show that you guys like with your favorite based podcast hosts? It's not like the Clay and Butt Show. 
No gay butt stuff. No gay butt stuff here. We get the takes right. We have the correct opinions pretty much every time. So why not support us on Bonus Land and get more of that four hours of exclusive content each month. Fuckustalks.com is the website. Please sign up right now. If you don't sign up, this show's going to get canceled and we're never going to perform anything again. Oh, my God. All right, Cringe of the Week. We have a great Cringe of the Week. I almost raised my knee up. But I did Keep it down. Keep the knee down. keeping it down because I'm under control. (laughs) Yeah, you're not out of control. You have discipline. Yep, out of control would be raising it. Under control is I'm not allowed to because Rap Boy gets mad. (laughs) It wasn't even me. It wasn't even me you listened to, actually. Well, it was uh, multiple people. Yeah. Comments, too. But then some people in the comments are saying, raise your knee, do whatever you want. That's true. That's true. It's so comfortable. Maybe there's a way I can now. Too fat for under the desk. Well, we're going to have a new table when we come back, right? Is that true? I ordered a new table. So you might be able to put the leg up without fear of anybody seeing that disgusting kneecap. It's not even disgusting. Hairy, distracting. It's it's like a little ham hock. (laughs) It is. Yeah, it is. (laughs) All right. Cringe. We have a very important cringe. First is the Will Ferrell trans stuff. Will Ferrell's on some trans shit. Will Ferrell is on a tour kind of promotional tour when he found out his close friend of 30 years, Harper Steele, was coming out as a trans woman. The two decide to embark on a cross-country road trip to process this new stage in their relationship. Uh, And they made it like a movie. They made it a documentary movie type thing, and it premieres at Sundance. You want to show the guy first? Yeah, let's show them at the red carpet. This is them on the red carpet. So there's the buddy. There's his buddy. <laughs> right here, straight ahead. There she is. Straight <laughs> out. Yeah, one of these two lost their shit. I wonder, I wonder which one it is. This guy just wants to dress like that. That's not even. You could just say you're a guy wearing. That's what a, I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm doing some doing shit. Wearing a European fashion sh- outfit. I wanted to wear leggings. I wanted to wear heels. Just uh, p- imagine I'm Mick Jagger or something. With There's the people stupid- in the NBA who dress like that. I know. I've yeah. seen them. So I don't even get it fully. But here's the clip that kind of left us unsettled. Yeah. What, what was your sort of, I guess, baseline knowledge of the trans experience before this very personal? Um, it's actually very personally. Baseline knowledge? <laughs> yeah. Uh, zero. Yeah. I, 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 I uh, really, you know, I know I'd met trans people before. I, don't, I didn't have anyone personally in my life. Uh, so this was all... <laughs> you know, new territory for me, which um, is why I think this piece is is so exciting for us to kind of uh, put out there in the world uh, uh, because I think it's a chance for, you know, all of us in in the cis community to be able to. All of us in the cis community. He has I think he has a gun. The guy, the trans guy's got a gun yeah. behind his back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the cis community. The word you didn't know about until a year ago that we changed the entire world to so that this guy could get dressed up. He could play dress up. Yeah. Some guy his buddy lost his shit. Went went cuckoo. We we need to start bringing back like 1950s words for this shit. He went cuckoo. Yeah. He had a break, you he know. He needs to get into put into a paddy wagon. Yeah, let's ship him off and, and brought to a facility. But instead, it's movie time. It's Will yeah. Ferrell movie time. So, did Will Ferrell kill a prostitute in 1998 and now this is what they brought him back for? That's what happened to Caitlyn Jenner. That's what happened to Caitlyn Jenner. They say, I don't know. I would never say that. It's just like that constitutional crisis going AWOL earlier. I would never say that. <laughs> but it's possible, you know? Yeah, something happened for sure. We kind of need like a safe word. Like if one of us ever like goes cuckoo and becomes a bozo, yeah. uh, we need like a, a word that's like a veto. I was going to say, I don't think we need it, buddy. Yeah, I don't think we need it either. But uh, good. let's come up with a word just in case or what? Yeah, we should have like a safe phrase. Say Dominican Santa. I say that a lot already. Oh, that's we true. got one. He's Fuck. right there. Um, but that's why I said it. I'm like looking around the room. <laughs> uh, there is something to be said about this, though, because with Will Ferrell and a lot of celebrities, we like them because they were funny when they were pretending to be a fake person in a movie at a time when movies were allowed to be funny. Yeah. But this is who Will Ferrell really is. Yeah, I don't know. Does he have a daughter who needs to get into USC right now, and th- and that's what he's up to? Like, I, you never know what these motivations are, but all I know is that this is, like we discussed on last episode of the three types of trans, 
mm-hmm. Munchausen kid, the autistic teenager, or the 60 plus year old man who Doing goes cuckoo. Fetish shit, yeah. Fetish shit, where's the tights? He tr- he tried on the tights at home a couple times, and he goes, yeah, mm-hmm. I really like this shit. They're gonna make a movie about me, and then he gets bricked. So he gets bricked up. So I don't know, man. It's it's ugly. Will Ferrell is, you didn't have to do this, Will, but I guess you're in the twilight of your, you're in the September of your years, Will. So yeah. I don't know. But Good this luck. is who Will Ferrell really is. This is like, he when he's on screen delivering lines on SNL or whatever, that's who he's pretending to be, and he's funny. Funny guy. This is Will Ferrell. Yeah. Like Will Ferrell in those other things is like playing a character. He's Buddy the Elf. This is Will Ferrell. And then what does Will Ferrell say? Cis community. Yeah. So which takes me to my next point. Step Brothers isn't even funny. That's fair. That's where I get to. And that happened to a, pretty much every celebrity. Once they do like a stupid political take, they go from like, for example, Billy on the street. They yeah. go from funny man on the street, crazy guy, crazy gay guy to just like obnoxious and kind of annoying gay guy. Yeah. So that's what happened to Will Ferrell. And let me know in the comments if you agree with me. I don't think Will Ferrell in Step Brothers. I don't think Step Brothers was even a funny movie. And people quote it too much. Oh, you put your dick on my drum set. Yeah. Yo, your balls. Do we just become best friends? Oh, room for activities. That shit's stupid. It's not even funny. All right. That's fair. Sorry to get so mad. That's fair. All right, let's move on. Well, I think there's a moment where Will Ferrell and his buddy, you know, I feel for him as a guy. My buddy of 30 years. And me, here we butt heads, and then he let the buddy win. Yeah. You're trans now, and I'm supporting you. When it should have been like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Where's my, where's our safe word? I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, day one's like, did you paint your nails? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like the, the, the first, the sign of it, it's like, did you gloss your nails? Like, yeah. go get a manicure and have like a little gloss that's not even that necessarily nail polish. Clear nail polish, yeah. yeah. Like, did you get clear nail polish? Why is your hair so long? You need a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> like, you shaving your so, beard? So there was that moment, and then the trans ideology won over. You but know? they're not even, how good of buddies can you be? If like if you started doing little things that were trans, it would get nipped in the bud. Same for me by you. Yeah. How how good of a buddy can you be if your buddy goes trans? Not, not a buddy not at all. Very. Well, maybe they should. They should maybe they should date a little bit. Yeah. Maybe that's the whole end game. Will Ferrell likes women, right? That's probably the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna Will kiss. Ferrell loves women. Yeah. They're, they're gonna make him kiss. Yeah. All right. There's a new. Uh, well, not new, but a uh, 50 year old trans swimmer who identifies as 13 year old, and now they are allowed to swim with teenage girls and change in their locker room. And also change in the locker room. And so this was Rebel News on the scene. Of course, the infamous 50-year-old man who identifies as a 13-year-old girl, that allows Nicholas uh, to swim with the teenage girls. Oh, and by the way, change and shower with them as well. Even though it's against world aquatic rules, he should be competing in an other division other as in transgender division it's disgusting but no he is so entitled he insists on swimming with real biological girls we that's sad and they go on to say that rebel news followed him until they saw him go into the changing room with the other teenaged girls yeah so here's a zoom up of him right there he is and the 13 year old girl and, identifying. And this is in Canada. So there's a different set of rules beyond America um, where I guess they're totally powerless and all the dads are what weak and too skinny to actually say, get the fuck out of there. Yeah. And if you order a medium cheeseburger, you have to sign a waiver. Yeah. Your kid gets a man in the locker room with them and you have to go. This is this is good. Yeah, you sign a waiver for the cheeseburger, but you get the hot dog for free. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. nice work. Nice. Just came up with that. Um, but basically this guy is doing his fetish shit and nobody, you know, there's a point where you can just go, this is wrong and you don't need any further discussion or reasoning. You don't have to win an argument with anybody. You just say, get the fuck out of that locker room right now. We're not doing this. Me and three dads. I grab my three dad buddies and we go, we're not doing this. Get out of here. Mm. And there was a New York uh, Post article that talked about how the kids were uh, creating towel rooms, like holding up towels to get like a privacy screen so that this freak couldn't see them. Mm. And uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened all of a sudden, but... Uh, it's time to go AWOL. It's time to go AWOL. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying, but I am saying. Yeah. And then um, this kind of takes me to a different point that's in this genre of things. It's good time to be to bully. 
and make fun of and mock. I agree. Mocking is our right. Mm -hmm. Mocking these people, mocking this craziness is our right. It brings awareness to it. And everyone's got to kind of start at least, if you're going to step up, at least start making fun of these situations. Yeah. We have a couple of um, tweets and memes that sum this up as well. Yeah. This first one, it says, when you hate on someone, make fun of a stranger, tear them down. What are you really accomplishing? You're making your friends laugh. And that's the best feeling in the world. That's it, baby. That's all we want to do. That's why we do it. Um, and then I saw this other one that I kind of wanted to read and just mm -hmm. threw in there with it. Real masculinity is calling your friends gay, punching down, making fun of minorities, <laughs> ripping cigs, volunteering, calling people pussies, and supporting one another. That's it. That's, That's real the masculinity. America I want to live in. I agree. So bullying is Americana. Making fun of the freaks is Americana as well. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the fat woman who can't fit into a dress. <laughs> <laughs> We're not being mean. We kind of are. Well, no. actually, there's a broader lesson here for this one. Mm -hmm. So uh, this doesn't fit. I rented this from Newly, and I've been trying. I'm sweating. It's just not going over the chest part. Like, it fits everywhere else, and it's comfortable, and it's roomy. But the way the seam is is not fitting. And so I just wanted to use this as a reminder and I wanted to show you that it's okay when clothes don't fit. It doesn't mean we have to spiral out of control and think there's something wrong with us or our body. Cause I know for me, that's initially where my brain wanted to go is of course this doesn't fit. You're so fat, you're nasty, it's all your fault. You can't even fit into this orange dress that you love so much. And instead it's reframing it and being like, you know what? Not every brand, not every cut, not every style is going to work with my body, and that's yeah, okay. That's interesting. And so, I mean, there's a lesson here, which is this girl says that she doesn't – she has these thoughts, right? The you're too fat, nothing will fit you, you're ugly or you whatever. You did this to yourself. You did this to yourself. Years and years of uh, inappropriate binge eating and – uh, no exercise got you here, and now the dress doesn't fit. Your tits are at your belly button. But you, <laughs> but you have to reframe it, right? You have to reframe your thought process. And the whole, and I feel like that's what a lot of like leftist or feel good content is to placate kind of the masses a little bit. But you need to be listening to that voice. Yeah, those instincts and those those insecurities and things. They can be channeled and funneled into action that stops those feelings. Exactly. Because like the voice of disgust and disappointment should fuel you. Like when I was fat, I said what? enough is enough. Was when fat? I was fat. <laughs> oh when I was <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm still fat. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm less fat than I was it's because not I was like, yo, you don't fit into these clothes. You wear fucking basketball shorts every day in a hoodie. You want to wear real clothes? You go about and pity for yourself. Go on and pity for yourself. So, yeah, then I stopped eating the processed trash and the seed oils. But there's like, yeah. Because the voice in my brain, that same one she had of you're too fat, you did this to yourself, you need to get healthy or you're going to die. I heard that too, but I listened. He didn't reframe it. He didn't, didn't go, go, oh, well, I'm okay because the podcast is good or this. Yeah, I did that for a while. He did that for a while. And that's the point is you need to be listening to those alarm bells and uh, like processing them into something beneficial for you instead of just being like, no, it's the whole world and all of human history and genetics that are wrong, mm. you know? So I yeah, mean, anything that's wrong with you is not your fault. It's the environment or it's a hate. It's your hateful coworkers or it's something that needs to change. Or you to, can reframe it away. You need a free seat instead of not fitting in the airplane. Exactly. Exactly. Which takes us to our next video. And but, we're not, we genuinely aren't even bullying that girl. Like what she's past a, a, a certain point there, but that, that thinking and everyone does it in some way. So it's the incorrect thinking. And that's what we wanted to point out. Exactly. It's that mindset that she's promoting is actually dangerous. Yeah. And you could post that same video and go, I don't fit in this dress, but I'm going to make sure I get 10,000 steps every day this month. And then we're going to try to fit it next month. And you maybe do. Exactly. And we were also talking about this with the uh, plus size Disney adults on last episode. If you find yourself scrolling and being like, hmm, I'm going to Disney. I need to look at the plus size Disney account. 
there's like an order of operations where if you're looking into the plus size Disney account, you need to immediately look into fitness accounts instead. Yeah. It's like, if you reach this point, immediately go back to, you know, do not pass go, go right back to fitness accounts. If you're thinking of look, consuming the plus size Disney content. Smart. There you go. So let's go to the girl eating the Big Mac. I am eating a Big Mac for the first time in four years because I'm no longer letting my eating disorder tell me I cannot have one. If I want the Big Mac, I'm going to eat the Big Mac. Is it even good? My eating disorder? Yeah, your eating disorder, was that just discipline and saying don't eat literally McDonald's? My eating disorder is the uh, esoteric knowledge that Big Macs aren't that great for you. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, what, the eating disorder? Um, and also keep in mind, eating a hamburger doesn't even have to be that bad. Mm -hmm. The reason eating a Big Mac and eating McDonald's is so bad is because it's full of all the chemicals and all the seed oils and all this cr horrible crap. Back in the day... For example, the French fries was mm -hmm. three ingredients, potatoes, tallow, salt. That's how McDonald's made their stuff. And you know what? Three ingredients. We just missed that too. I think that ended in like 1991. Yeah. And then now, can you read the ingredients of French fries? Potatoes, vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, hydrogenated soybean oil, natural beef flavor, wheat and milk derivatives, dextrose, sodium acid, prophysate. Salt, natural beef flavoring, contains hydrolyzed wheat and hydrolyzed milk as starting ingredients. So when you can't pronounce the stuff, you either can't read good mm -hmm. or it's full of crap you shouldn't be eating. And I'm a little bit of both. <laughs> but yeah, the, the ingredients used to be three things and now it's full of all that crap and it's poisonous. So it's like you could eat a burger if you eat the right kind of nice grass fed burger yeah. and maybe on like a sourdough something mm -hmm. and maybe some good cheese. You know, you can have a burger here and there, but when you do McDonald's, you're like missing the whole point and not realizing that you're eating literal poison. Yeah. And there's a, I'm obviously on a health journey myself. And then the guy I follow, uh, he always says, if God made it, you can eat it. Yeah. And that's it. God didn't make hydrogenated corn oil, soybean, whatever. Yeah. That's a invention of the beast of man. Yeah. And it's meant to like lubricate your car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to- It should have been a sign when, I feel like there was 10 years ago when uh, people were picking up cooking oil from restaurants and then using it to power their cars. Like, you remember that when that kind of popped up? Mm -hmm. That should have been a sign. Yeah. Nobody listened. Everyone goes, whoa, that's crazy that we can do that. Yeah. It's flying uh, to combust the engine or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it goes. The car goes. <laughs> All right, last page of Cringe, the abortion girl. So this girl was presenting in front of Wis Michigan or Wisconsin? Wisconsin, I believe. Yeah, let, let this rip. I think abortion should be unrestrictive. And I think when somebody finds out in pregnancy, when or how far along that they are when someone finds out, they should be able to get an abortion if they want to. And for some people, that is full term. If I can't get abortion training here, if I can't perform abortions in my career, I will not stay in Wisconsin. And a lot of my colleagues who are on the same track agree. Good. Get them out. Good. Get Horrible fucked. vocal fry. And then it's like uh, this person. Imagine marrying a girl like that mm -hmm. who views babies in that way. It's like, how can you be a good mom if you think you, you, you're fine with murdering a baby that's nine months well, and that's the thing is this girl is clearly in, in med school or in the pipeline for something. And so she probably has some knowledge that at least, you know, oh, a premature baby born two months early, born three months early, born four weeks early. They make it. They make it. And they have a fully and they have a great life eventually. And they, and they wear a little hat. They stay they in the NICU <laughs> and they wear a little hat. Right. <laughs> and so, like, she knows it. So why does she need full term to be abortable? And I think it's just some sort of psychological thing where she, she needs or wants a total women victory yeah. where you have no right to say anything about anything about her body. And um, it's just yeah. like, let's be reasonable. There is, you know, I, I know our show watchers don't like it. There is some sort of like, okay, give, take, you know, and for her to try to take the entire term is just a little like asinine. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, 
it trends towards demon operated. Yeah, it, I I would assume so. And there's another girl who's uh, running for Congress who ran for Congress, I think, in a special election last year. Yeah. Her name's Alexandra Hunt. Uh, she was the one that had the OnlyFans and was raising money for her congressional run uh, with her OnlyFans. 2024, everybody. And her sign says, I'm a progressive pro-choice woman running for Congress. My run is possible because of the abortion I had at 18. So, wow, that's impressive. You made an OnlyFans and f- failed and lost a congressional primary run for the Democrats. And you wouldn't have been able to do that if you didn't kill your baby. And do these people think nobody with kids has ever ran for Congress? Yeah. Like, I don't get it. Or, or nobody with kids has ever completed college or done something. Um, yeah. So yeah, You were really proud. and Your life's way better now that you don't have a kid. You were able to make your OnlyFans and lose, lose, a, the Congress. lose, lose to Congress and waste money. Yeah. Uh, but there was something that's a little uplifting. It's a little uplifting gold without being an uplifting gold. Okay. Uh, there was a guy who is filming himself outside an abortion clinic, and they offer services. I think it's a Christian group that offers services to people who are thinking about getting abortions. And it was really good energy. I want to just play it. Morning. Are you guys here for the abortion clinic? We work for a Christian ministry. Come to help moms and dads. Do you guys know for sure you want to get the abortion? Or are you having second thoughts? Okay. Do you know how many weeks you are? Eight weeks? Okay, so look, at eight weeks, your baby already has a beating heart. Your baby already has brainwaves. And by eight weeks, your baby already has a gender. We have three kids, so I'm always so excited to find out. If you guys want to find out your gender, our ministry is happy to pay for you guys to go meet up gender reports. And we'll actually help you every step of the pregnancy. We have a whole church full of people that want to help you guys. We'll help you with baby wipes, baby shower, car seat, and all those things. That's literally what we do. And then the most important thing that we do is we tell people about Jesus. Because what abortion is, is it's actually the murder of an innocent baby. In the courts of God, if you go through with this, our friend here would be a murderer and you would be the accomplice. And so I want you to know today that there's other options outside of murder. And our church is here to help you. Isn't that nice? Yeah. But then he goes, you're a murderer. You're, <laughs> you're the accomplice. That's a tough pitch. That's a tough pitch. He, may, he might need to work that out. Like a script, like a Jordan uh, Belfort script. Like maybe lose that accusation. You're the murderer and, and you're, you're the, the accomplice. accomplice. <laughs> so when you die and go to face you for your judgment, you're going to have to talk about this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but everything else was so nice too. Like the we'll help you with your car seats, every step of the process. And then it's smart. Because once people know the gender of the baby, they're so much more likely to not get the abortion. For sure. So it's like, oh, what's the gender? We'll help you. Fi- we'll help you figure it out. We'll we'll do a ultrasound and find out the gender. And once you do that, they're less likely to kill the baby. Yeah. It's good to see that though. And a lot of times people say, oh, pro life people are only pro life till the baby's born, and then they forget about them. There's a nice example of someone doing the the hard part. But if the girl listens to this guy, she'll never be able to do OnlyFans and have a failed congressional run. Yeah, that's so true. She can't lose 150 grand on a congressional run. Fuck. And show her tits on the computer for $4. Damn. Don't have this kid. Next time. We'll get him next time. Yeah. All right. Don't get too down or too depressed. It's going to get a little bit worse. We're moving on to Urban Decay. Our first story from Urban Decay is about the quiet Christian boy from a nice family. Yeah. So there was a triple murder in the UK. Hmm. And this goes back to our journalist section. Uh, The Daily Mail online posted that the quiet boy from a hardworking Christian family who became a triple killer, quiet boy from a hardworking Christian family, and he knifed three people to death Mm. in the UK. You got to watch out for those quiet boys from nice Christian families because they're going to be trying to get you, which is literally probably how they're trying to frame it. Like that article without the picture of the guy's face is just like quiet boy from Christian family murders three. Yeah. Was that a black immigrant who murdered someone? No, that was a Christian yeah, who murdered three people. Quiet <laughs> from a quiet family. Yeah. Um, and here's here's a piece from the article. He was brought up as a quiet, modest boy in hardworking Christian family. But Valdo Calocane hid the full extent of his mental breakdown from his family before knifing three people, uh, three innocent people to death in Nottingham last year. Um, and Nottingham Crown Court heard he had been sectioned four times in the three years leading up to the killings, which basically means committed, like to a mental, mental mental hospital commitment, loony bin. Mm. So, uh, and obviously this guy's from West Africa and moved to Europe or his parents moved to Europe. So, you know, 
Here's here's the uh, two of the people that he killed. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that looks like a nice Christian boy from a quiet family. Quiet or Christian boy right there, and a beautiful girl who just got knifed. Here's the outfit he was wearing when he murdered. Yep, there he is. There's the quiet Christian boy now. All black and a beanie and a backpack with a knife. They yep. called him a boy, even though he's like 30 years old, some 30 look, something years old. Look at his eyes. Quiet, That's just yeah. like a dead, there's nothing behind him. Quiet Christian boy. I'd lock him up for looking like that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so, do you want to go through the other a couple? Yeah, of there was a meme that came out. There's like a meme where is it Brad Pitt? I don't. I don't think so. No. So it looks like Brad Pitt, but yeah. it's like uh, the guy at the gas station who's like nervously pumping his gas. And the meme is they always put whatever the headline was and how they describe the killer, and they always do it in like ways that protect them. So this one's like quiet boys from hardworking Christian families might be here. I hate quiet hard <laughs> quiet boys from hardworking Christian families, and so. There's a couple other ones, too. Here's another one. Wannabe influencer allegedly tortured, killed animals live on YouTube for likes. Is there? Yeah, there she is. Wannabe influencer. I guess that's how they frame it. There might be wannabe influencers here. Uh Uh-oh. And then here's another one. Polite man robs Chicago bank with note vowing to pay it back soon just days after being cleared of another bank robbery. Polite man robs oh, multiple banks. A polite man could be here. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. So what do you get when a polite man and a wannabe influencer and a hardworking, quiet Christian boy uh, join forces? A lot of dead people and no money in the bank. You get dead. They kill you <laughs> and steal your wallet. And if your wallet only has $9, you got to let them go. Yep, exactly. So this is like we said before, another reason to hate journalists, because obviously whatever they're up to is not in the best interest of the people they write for. Yeah, and that it, well, th- they do these headlines, and then when there's some like Amazon worker accuses someone of racism, they'll say like white Karen accused of racist tirade against Amazon worker, and it's like that was a misunderstanding, and mm-hmm. and race is mentioned four times, but these ones. You don't mention race, and then, like, there's bodies on the floor. Yeah. Or there's dead animals from the wannabe influencer. Black guy kills two nice white kids. And, and it was another guy, too, a third. And a third guy. Quiet quiet Christian boy. So, well, journalists, if you if you start losing your jobs, good luck. Learn to code, right? Yep, exactly. And then the Romeo Nans, that guy, uh, he was a murderer who's let out. Uh, he killed seven people. Is that true? Crazy. Yeah. Uh, manhunt underway, but he ended up killing himself uh, in Joliet, Illinois, after he reportedly went to two locations and killed at least seven people and injured several more. I didn't even hear about this story anywhere besides this show. I, I barely heard about it other than obviously right wing circles. And here's the reason why. Uh, last year, Will County Judge Donald DeWilkins, Donald DeWilkins, signed a warrant carrying the $100,000 bond for Nance on January 24th, 2023. So uh, almost a year ago on shooting charges filed against him for the January 3rd, 2023 incident. And here's the line that makes me go crazy. Nance was accused of firing a gun in the direction of a Buick Enclave occupied by a woman. So he's just shooting his gun off, letting that thing talk. That's called shooting at someone. Yeah. That's called attempted murder. Look at the, these soft words. Firing a gun in the direction of a Buick Enclave occupied by a woman. Uh, yeah. Sounds like he was trying to kill that woman. I don't know what, what mental math you need, but eventually Nance's attorney sought to lower Nance's bond to 20000 so he could get released from jail. They did it, and uh, seven people are dead now. So He killed seven people now that he's out. And the, they, they lowered his bond to 20000 And the judge probably goes into work the next day and just does it again. Yeah. No consequences, no anything. So. Yep. Uh, next clip. This next clip uh, was actually sent in by a show watcher. It's from Kansas City. Uh, this guy is just punching holes in people's windows. What's it called? Pipping? Bipping? Yeah, bipping. Bipping. Um, and so this guy was sent in from a show watcher, and the guy is busting this window, and as he's crawling into the car, here you can see it. He's got an ankle monitor on. <laughs> so they bust the window. They look in. They, they, they bust the window, then figure out if you have anything or not. And the guy's got an ankle monitor on because he's clearly been popped for other crimes. Should be easy to find him. Should yeah. be very easy to charge him again and then take away his house arrest and make it a real arrest. Yeah. So speaking of Kansas City, Taylor Swift stalker. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift stalker has been arrested for the third time in five days. He went back to Taylor's block immediately after leaving court for his previous arrest. 
Thank you, Your Honor. And then he just turns and goes right to Taylor Swift, like the Terminator guy. He starts running like this. Straight to Taylor Swift's house uh, again. And then this girl, Caroline, she said, can't wait till the Swifties discover bail reform. Yeah. We have to red pill the Swifties. They're a huge voting block. Yeah. And if they learn, it, something has to affect Taylor for them to care, I guess. Exactly. And uh, this guy getting let off. And I think we covered uh, another celebrity that this happened to where the stalker, stalker got arrested and then immediately came back. I can't quite remember who. Do you have any memory of that? I don't that? remember. It was someone, but it was a similar thing, like left court and immediately came back. Mm -hmm. So, so hopefully the Swifties wake up to what's going on. We need, uh, it's like, it's going to be called bail reform reform, where mm. we just go back to the original, where it's really hard to get out if you're a violent and deranged criminal. So just, Yeah, bail reform reform is just the law. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. law, law, law in order. Exactly. All right, next clip. Uh, this woman goes in the grocery store with her baby who has no, who only went in the store with a diaper on. Yeah. So the baby only was wearing a diaper. <laughs> He came in here with that jacket on. Yeah, he did. That baby just had a pamper on. That baby just had a pamper on. I can't. Christine. He's wearing a trash bag. And she just threw cold, frozen food on him. And the baby's shivering. Somebody call police on her. Get out that man. Get out that man's face, please. The phone? crazy. The fuck? <laughs> Starts twerking. Somebody call the police on her. And we can skip ahead to where the baby's getting clothed. So a woman comes over in an electric scooter and starts clothing the baby and taking the tags off because she's going to pay for the clothes. Yeah. And the woman, who's the mother of the baby, doesn't even pay attention. She's playing on a phone. She's playing on my phone. She's playing games on a phone. She don't care. So... There's so that. once you're confronted, you obviously have to torque your way out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing I realized is I think U.S. taxpayers, no matter what, are paying for this kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Either we're paying for the EBT and we're paying for all his food and stuff like that, or we separate them because the mom's obviously incompetent and thought torquing would be a good response. Mm -hmm. And then we have to pay for the yeah. foster care. Exactly. So- our tax dollars pay for this kid, however the kid turns out, whether they go to foster care or with the mom. Our tax dollars pay for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Our tax dollars pay for illegals. Yep. Our tax dollars pays for schools where the kids can't read but are told to be gay. All the Chromebooks that the Baltimore uh, school district is about to lose. Tax dollars go to the UN, which gives cash and envelopes to illegals who haven't gotten here yet. Yep. So basically our tax dollars go everywhere but us. I haven't seen one magnificent feat of engineering built in America ever. I don't think anyone's in ever. In my lifetime. Yeah. I don't think anyone's ever given me anything and said, oh, the tax dollars, you know, look in the driveway. Here's your piece. We need your <laughs> vote next semester or next election. No one, no election. one gives us anything. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our last piece of urban decay, the Seattle fi uh, car fire. This is pretty interesting. Hello? Hey, no, I'm, I'm okay. You're okay? Yeah. No, I was just All right. setting my purse on fire because I was cold. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. No worries. I was just setting my purse on fire because I was cold. And if you look at the beginning of the video, she's parked very close to other cars in a no parking zone. Yeah. So, you know, her fire becomes your fire becomes an insurance claim that uh, they don't pay you the full value of your car for. This is another day in Seattle. Hey. Oh, just lighting my purse on fire because I'm a little cold in my no parking spot next to other cars, and I'm a crackhead who's about to fall asleep. Love your neighbor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No worries. I just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> All right, carry on. <laughs> yeah, no need to bother you. All right, don't get too down or don't get too depressed. We are moving on to Uplifting Gold. We have some stuff that's actually uplifting this week. Let's do it. Good. First things first, guy catches a giant fish. You guys like to fish. Look at this. This is... Is this fake? This is like a king salmon. The king king salmon. And I've never seen one this big. I didn't even know they got this big. Wow. That's good big fish. And look at it. You can tell. I think it's a male. You can tell by the hook jaw. You see the hook? How it comes up and under? Yeah. That's yeah. a big old nasty male. They have teeth? Mm, no, I don't think so. 
They're wow. Big old fish caught in a fishing rod. Fun day fishing with your buddies. I didn't know they made them that big, so that's crazy. All right, let's go to the, the police officer's surprise. This is a good clip. Babe. You got a packet. Who's it from? I can't tell you. Tell me who it's from. It's for me. What is what is it? Now you got me all excited. It's a custom cup. Are you serious? It says dad on it. You're joking me. Ariana. You're kidding me. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that nice? That is nice. Nice cop is going to have a baby. Yep. Surprised. And that's good. I you have like one small issue with that. The phrase joking me. Hmm. It's, it's only you're joking or you're kidding me. Or you're joking with me. No, combining them, I don't, I don't respect that. Mm. So fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, man. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a good point. Richard, that's why we have you here, buddy. Yeah, thank you. You're thank you. Happy to point. serve. <laughs> uh, Dad uh, saves the kids from the snow. There's people coming down on the sled. Dad goes out and saves them. Here it comes. Look at this. Dad save. One scoop. The other one's going down. He's going to take it on into the... F oh, it would have been brutal if he stayed Would have been a murder. Would have been death. And then a jump with two kids. <laughs> Everyone makes it. Yep. It's good... It's a good dad save. That's what it's all about. That's why you have the kids. That is. All right. Fake report card, kid. This is my favorite. This is good. When you own punishment because you bought this home and said your teacher had to write down your grades because she ran out of paper to print your report card. Now you want punishment looking crazy. <laughs> Only me. This is my life. My chaps. Only me. You embarrassed, you don't want to look at the camera. That's what he gets. And here's his biggest mistake. He gave himself a hundred in math. Mm. You gotta give yourself an 85, buddy. I made a fake report card once, freshman year of high school. I scanned it, I photoshopped, I changed all the numbers. No one ever thought it was coming because such a big heist. Yeah. Such a big lie that you couldn't even imagine. Mm -hmm. And it's it like Bernie worked. Madoff. That's how it started. He gets away with the first lie, and all of a sudden, it's the biggest Ponzi scheme you've ever seen. And that's what happened because I only needed to change one bad grade, and I needed to get all my other grades somewhat close. Mm -hmm. So I would print out like a hundred versions of my report card because I didn't know what my grades were going to be. Where it's like, all right, am I going to get a ninety-two in math, a ninety-one in math, a ninety-five? I had to do all these different versions with the one grade switched, and then I had to do that for three quarters. I had to guess all my grades you for were every in deep. quarter. Yeah. I was in really deep. And then one time in the fourth quarter, I undershot the only best version of the report cards I had. I, I undershot on one of the grades. And I didn't tell my mom until I graduated college. Smart. And that she, statute of limitations was yeah. well beyond. And I graduated college. I had a job. And I was like, hey, by the way, freshman year, I got like a 75 in math. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last clip of Uplifting Gold, the father-son pizza combo. This is good stuff. How about I'm going to make a million dollar pizza? Okay? Right. Look, when you do this, it's got right? the henchman hats. Hey, just look at me do it. All right? You go like this, right? You put it on top. Now you just put enough sauce. See? You don't want to put a little, but you don't want to put a lot. Just enough. Nope, just and enough. Always hold it from the bottom, the stability. Look, look how beautiful. And then you glow with it. Look. See what I'm doing? Get a little Parmesan cheese on the bottom. Take a little Romano. And you get the mozzarella. You don't go too much mozzarella. Just enough. You see that enough? I see it. Yeah. See that beautiful? And then, you put a dash of oregano. And a thing of olive oil on the edge. Take olive oil. Put it in the oven. Nice. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Let's fast see the forward result. to the result. Good looking pizza. Well, it's good New York style pizza. You got to pass the knowledge along because otherwise you'll end up living in Florida where there's really no good pizza. 
And, and then illegals will make pizza. Yeah, and then it'll be like the American cheese on it. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have to go AWOL against Joe Biden because of American cheese pizza. Yep, exactly. That's what happened in LA. The Chinese food had like Mexican seasoning on it. Not good. It so weird. Uh, and that pizza, I was looking at their uh, Instagram. The, uh, when you do the tomato sauce, mm -hmm. all you got to do is crush tomatoes and crush them up even more. Salt, pepper. Really? You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to add too much. The more basic, the better. All right. It is Friday, and it's the end of the show, so we have shout-outs. Uh, happy 40th birthday to Burley. He's a big show watcher. Hello. Happy birthday. You. Surprise, I'm sure. Uh, happy 40th birthday. Shout out to Jackson of the Maddie and Jackson clan. Oh. There are some show watchers, fellow schizo henchmen maxers as well. Very nice. Um, and let's see what else. Happy 23rd birthday to Francisco Diaz. Francisco. <laughs> what is that the same guy from You've Killed My Father and I'm Here for Revenge? What is that? <laughs> Inigo Montoya. <laughs> yeah, no. Not quite Francisco. Okay. Francisco Diaz, happy 23rd birthday, my guy. Glad you liked the show. Happy birthday to Zach, which was yesterday. He's a show watcher, and him and his buddies watched the show while ice fishing in Ohio. Ooh, send us video of that. Yeah, the whole squad's people, watching. People forget that we want to see videos of, like, crazy shit or watching in weird locations. So yeah. don't forget that. Don't forget that. Especially, it's, a, it's good production value. Yeah. And then congrats to Morgan and Shelby Larkin. They just got married in Georgia last weekend in Georgia. Georgia. They've been watching since the Spoon days. Very nice. Um, and then we also got a shout out, a text group uh, message shout out. Can you just kind of read uh, whatever it says? Uh, best thing I did recently was switch my daily podcast to Patrick by David. They cover daily news so well, political and business oriented. From what? The Young Turks? Question mark. And he says, Pat McAfee and Joe Rogan, LOL. And then he says, Dave Rubin? Question mark. Laughing uh, face. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. My go-to podcast is still Fleckus all the way. Best political analysis out there, hands down. Thank you. Very generous. Yeah. Very generous. Hey, hands down. Knees coming up for that. Um, unfortunately, not a daily show, but twice a week. I'm a bonus land subscriber, so I get two extra shows per week, which makes it blah, blah, blah. Hey, that's what we like to see. The shout out in the group chat. Yeah, That's very important. That goes a long way. Uh, the shout outs in the group chat. And then also um, there was a sumo shout out. So these guys were at a sumo in Japan and they shouted us out. Follow Fleckus Fox Podcast for the best new podcast of all time. Very cool. So they're in Japan. They're repping the show. We like to see that. Very nice. And last but not least, maybe last but most important, Hannah, remember from uh, Arizona? Yeah. Where everyone went and saw her booth, and we had like a Fleckus meetup at the Hannah booth in Arizona in Phoenix. She made us paintings, which she sent to the P.O. Box. Very cool. Very good thing to send to the P.O. Box. And look how cool these paintings came out. Can I play this music? Or? No music. Well, we ruined some of her hype. Imagine sick music playing. Yeah, sick synthwave music. Boom. <laughs> Richard Ratboy. Look at that with the background and everything. There's me getting glossed. You getting glossy too. These are nice. Very cool. I'm going to hang that up right outside the studio. Smart. That's very cool stuff. Well, that is the end of the show. Another Fleckus Talks in the Books. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. FleckusMerch.com for the best merch in the game. Make sure you join Bonus Land. There's not going to be an episode on Tuesday, so if you want to watch a Q&A, a great episode between me and Ratboy, that'll be out on Tuesday. And there's a Bonus Land episode, 30-minute episode dropping right now. So now is the time to sign up. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next week. Oh my god, what?